Hey there, everybody, and welcome back to Utility Sports. Today, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at J.J. Watt, where he could possibly be looking to go in free agency. We've got multiple destinations that I think are going to come into consideration for the extremely great pass rusher and defensive lineman, J.J. Watt. But before we jump into today's video, I just want to remind each and every one of you to hit that subscribe button. We are so, so close to 2,000 subscribers. It would be awesome if you guys could take a second and hit that subscribe button right now. It's absolutely free to you. Uh, we do have a jersey giveaway on the channel right now. It is a Trevor Lawrence jersey for the Jacksonville Jaguars, number 16 jersey. It's very nice. Uh, so make sure you guys are subscribed to be entered into that and also leave a comment on today's video to be entered for that jersey giveaway. Now let's get into it here with J.J. Watt. And the first team that I think is a real possibility for J.J. Watt to sign with is the Green Bay Packers. What are some of the pros for him possibly being a Green Bay Packer? Well, one, he went to the University of Wisconsin. He's from that area. That would be like a homecoming for him. I think that is something that resonates with a lot of different players around the league. Now, not every player has that type of agency and that name that'll let them choose where they really want to go at the end of the day. He does have that choice. He is a player who's going to have that notoriety. He's going to have the ability to choose really where he wants to play. He doesn't have to just wait to get an offer. He's going to get to choose an offer. And the Packers being from an area he's from originally does go a long way in these negotiations. Also, the Packers are a contending team. They were just in the NFC Conference Championship game. Yes, they did lose to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. However, they are a team that should be interested in J.J. Watt, and he's a good fit there. You can put him in on the defensive line. Zadarius Smith and Preston Smith have been so impactful at those outside linebacker positions coming off the edge. Now you put someone in at that defensive end position. You get way better in the run game. And you also get a third pass rusher, someone who can consistently get home. Him next to Kenny Clark is a terrifying thing for NFL offenses, especially with those two other pass rushers in the Smith brothers on the outside. What is the negative here, though, for the Green Bay Packers? They just don't really have the cap space right now. They'd have to make a couple tough decisions. They'd have to make a couple moves in order to open up the cap space for J.J. Watt. Reports today came out saying he was getting an offer up near 15 or $16 million dollars I'm guessing that was on a one-year deal. I would be surprised if that was an annual two- to four-year deal. I would be very surprised by that, just given what his age is at this point and some of his injury concerns over the past. That is more than likely a one-year deal. But that is about right where the price range is going to be. Look at what Jadavion Clowney got last year with the Tennessee Titans. I think that Watt is worth more than what Clowney got, the former teammates there. And I think that Watt is going to be around that 13 to $16 million price range. 15, 16, that's a little bit on the high end, I think, uh, for what we're going to see him get. I think 13 is about right, maybe $14 million. However, it's going to be right around that uh, range. It depends on what team's offering him that too. If it's a non-contending team, that is going to be an interesting situation to see if he goes where the money is or where the winning could possibly be. Now we got the Pittsburgh Steelers as option number two. What are the pros? One of them is super obvious. TJ Watt and Derek Watts. His two brothers are on the Pittsburgh Steelers, one being an outside linebacker and TJ Watt. Could have been a defensive player of the year candidate this year. And Derek Watt, the fullback there in Pittsburgh. You would have a reunion there of the three brothers. That's a really good feel-good story and something to monitor. Also, they are a contending team. I know that they're, the season didn't end necessarily the way they wanted it to, but an addition of J.J. Watt onto that defensive line as Bud Dupree's replacement does make a lot of sense, both for the Pittsburgh Steelers and J.J. Watt. He gets to be around his brothers. There's that emotional pull again. We had talked about that with the Green Bay Packers, with being close to home, where he grew up, where he played his college ball. Now the Steelers have that with the other two Watt brothers there. He does make a lot of sense going to Pittsburgh as a fit in terms of what they're looking for on that roster. And I think that they could figure out a way to get there with the cap space as well. That's renegotiating with Roethlisberger. That's really the only thing that could hold this up at this point. And I think with Roethlisberger looking to maybe creatively adjust his contract to work with the Pittsburgh Steelers, it could open up enough room for J.J. Watt to come in on that 13 to $16 million deal we were just talking about. Team three, we're going to stay in the AFC North here for this one. This is the Cleveland Browns. Why does this make sense for J.J. Watt? Well, one, you get to play across from Miles Garrett. That would be instantly the best defensive ed duo in the league, in my opinion. J.J. Watt, still a very high-end player. Miles Garrett, perhaps the best young pass rusher in the NFL. He is an extremely talented monster, and I think that J.J. Watt would be motivated to get on the same defensive line as him. 
the two of them would cause a lot of havoc there. And he would get to play against his brothers twice a year as well here, staying in that division. Now that might be a fun situation for him. You get to do the whole jersey uh, exchange, the jersey swap after the game. And he gets to see his brothers a little bit more just being in that same division, being a little bit closer to them than he has been in Houston. This team is also very young and talented. They got very close this year. They pushed the Kansas City Chiefs a little bit even uh, in the playoffs. And they've got a lot of talent. Uh, they're very young. Their salary cap space is actually pretty well managed at this point. They have enough money where they could bring him in outright without having to really make a tough decision. The only decision that looms ahead of them is what they're going to do with Odell Beckham Jr., to me, it seems like the team clicks a little bit more when he's actually not on the field. I think Baker Mayfield's more comfortable not feeling like he has to force him the ball. Now, I know that doesn't necessarily make sense. Odell Beckham Jr. is a great wide receiver, very great talent, most talented feat in the league, some would say. Uh, and he's just got a lot of he's got a lot of talents, but he might be a guy that they move on from. They could look at picking up an asset back for him, uh, although I don't think it'd be a super high asset just with what his injury is now and his recent performance. What's the con here? There's a little bit less of that emotional connection than Pittsburgh and Green Bay has. We talked about Green Bay being where he played his college ball, Pittsburgh being uh, where his family is right now, essentially. Cleveland doesn't really have that to offer to J.J. Watt right now. This is more about a football fit. This is about, hey, we have a great defensive end in Miles Garrett. Why don't you come play next to him? And you guys can be an absolutely incredible duo here for the Cleveland Browns. Another team, the Buffalo Bills. And as you guys can tell here, we have a lot of teams that are contenders. The Buffalo Bills are probably one of the few teams in the league that can say, hey, we feel like we're one piece away. We can battle with the Kansas City Chiefs. We've got the offense to deal with it, uh, with, stuff, with Stephon Diggs and his recent performances. Josh Allen, he looks like he's turning into a franchise quarterback. We've got a nice young secondary, a lot of talent on the back end. We've got a, a, a great linebacker duo in Tremaine Edmonds and uh, also – They've got a nice uh, situation there with Sean McDermott. I think he's one of the better coaches in the NFL. He's getting the most out of his guys week in, week out. And his defensive emphasis as well works in pretty well for the Buffalo Bills. And I think that they should be willing to put their chips in for J.J. Watt this offseason. Now, the cap space is the, the real difficulty here. They need to make a lot of tough decisions on personnel to make room. One of those would be departing with Matt Milano, who is set for free agency. I don't think he will come back at this point. They would have to use the draft to look for another linebacker to put next to Tremaine Edmonds and keep that linebacker duo intact there. But two moves that they could make that would get them about 60% of the way to the money for J.J. Watt would be cutting John Brown and cutting Jerry Hughes. Those moves together would save you about $9 million. You still need to about, find about 5 or $6 million. However, I think it is possible that they could make this work if they do make those moves. Another team, the Tennessee Titans, and this one I think does actually make a lot of sense. Historically, teams in division like to go after each other's players when they hit free agency, when they become available. The Titans for years have had to see J.J. Watt and his menacing presence along that Houston defensive front. Now Tennessee, with their biggest need being an edge, could have a shot at making a move for J.J. Watt. They are a contending team. Their offense, they figured it out there with Ryan Tannehill and Derrick Henry. It'll be interesting to see if they keep up that success without Arthur Smith. And they've only needed an edge. They need to get after the quarterback more, and they need to be more dominant in the run game. Defensively, J.J. Watt would be the perfect acquisition for the Tennessee Titans. We saw them last year make a move for Jadeveon Clowney. It didn't quite work out. His injuries didn't really get after the QB as often when he was healthy either. J.J. Watt coming in is the perfect solution to their problem. It allows them to keep their first round pick and maybe address a different spot on that team, possibly a wide receiver, maybe a cornerback, which could be a need because in order to get there in the cap space, they'd have to figure out a way to free up that money. Malcolm Butler is one that jumps out to me. They could save about seven, $8 million from cutting him. However, I don't think that's necessarily a great move. I still think he's a starting level corner. It's just, you're having to try and figure out ways to creatively get to that cap space to bring in JJ Watt. Malcolm Butler looks like one of those options, but it seems like a short-term deal would only be likely here for J.J. Watt. And a final team here, a surprise team actually for me, would be the Los Angeles Chargers. Now, what are some of the pros? Tom Telesco, their GM, he's showing a willingness to pay players uh, in free agency. He did it last year with Brian Balaga, and there should be a lot of motivation here for the Chargers. They need to replace Melvin Ingram and why not just replace him with someone worse than him, but why not actually improve over him at a price tag similar to what he's going to want anyway? And it keeps you 
some of that flexibility if you go with a shorter term deal here with J.J. Watt. They have Joey Bosa already. Similarly to the Cleveland Browns putting J.J. Watt across from what we see there in Cleveland, Miles Garrett. Why don't they do that with Joey Bosa? Bring in an elite D end, someone who's going to be able to move across that defensive front and give a lot of versatility to that Chargers defense. They just brought in the LA Rams, Brandon Staley as their head coach. Defense is going to be an emphasis point for the Los Angeles Chargers. I think that that makes a lot of sense. And they have one of the most salary cap. Uh, they have one of the highest salary cap spaces in the NFL at this point. I believe they have the seventh most money available. And J.J. Watt could fit easily into that. They could also use some other money to improve this roster in some other ways. Maybe if they wanted to go out and get a cornerback in free agency or so on, that could be a possible route for them. Now, what are the negatives about the Los Angeles Chargers? One, they're not necessarily a contending team. I just don't know if they're quite there yet. I think that they would need maybe one or two pieces in addition to J.J. Watt. Justin Herbert's still young. I don't know if that's necessarily enough to sell J.J. Watt on coming to Los Angeles despite the nightlife, the city, everything about it. And another con is actually Von Miller here. I think that Von Miller is much more likely to end up a Los Angeles Charger on a cheaper deal than what J.J. Watt is. I think Von Miller makes some more sense. Chris Harris Jr. has been recruiting the former Bronco teammate Von Miller to the Los Angeles Chargers. I think that's something to monitor moving forward. I think it's more likely Von Miller's a Charger than J.J. Watt, but I did think that they were worth mentioning in this video. So where do I think J.J. Watt will sign? And that's pretty clear and obvious to me at this point. I, I'm leaning towards the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think the Green Bay Packers do have a legitimate shot. I think the Titans are really in run. I think that the Titans are one of the teams that are really underrepresented in the move to get J.J. Watt. However, the Steelers, it just makes so much sense with his brothers playing there. J.J. Watt is the league's biggest advocate of T.J. Watt. And I know he would love nothing more than to play with his brothers there in Pittsburgh. I think that that is a really high selling point for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And at this point would give them the edge over these other teams, in my opinion. Let me know in the comments below where you think J.J. Watt will sign and play in 2021. I'm looking forward to hearing your guys' takes on J.J. Watt. And we'll catch you guys in the next video.